In this fight between Marlon Vera versus Dominic Cruz, you see Vera being super patient in the first round. And this is because Dominic Cruz is, with his unorthodox style, he, he's so hard to read. He's like, he's southpaw, he's orthodox, he's jumping in, jumping out, throwing his head this way, that way, hands are low. So it's like, it's a really uncommon pattern that you would ever see in a fighter outside of Dominic Cruz. So instead of taking big risks, Vera just watches, hands up, sort of keeping his distance, doing his best not to give much away. And he does actually cop a little bit of criticism from the from the commentators for this, saying, oh, he's starting too slow. It looks like he's going for a walk in the park sort of thing. And I actually think this is the best way to deal with a fighter as unorthodox as Dominic Cruz. Cruz actually has some really successful moments in this round. He lands two takedowns, but also he he has this kind of this karate blitz style of attacking where he'll just almost run forward in a straight line, blasting punches uh, in a in a way that a boxer wouldn't usually run forward. See, most of the time, most MMA fighters, uh, you know, I want to say most, uh, uh, MMA doesn't really have a style, but generally speaking, people almost base their striking off kickboxing and boxing with this more traditional one foot forward, one foot back, hands up sort of style. And when you when you punch with your left left hand, your left foot steps forward. When you punch with your right hand, your right foot steps forward. Whereas Cruz just blitzes opposite hand, opposite foot running forward sometimes. Other times he switches to a more conventional boxing sort of style. So it's it's really hard to get a read on this. And he has some really good successful moments using this blitz style in the first round. In round two, Cruz, again, has some really successful moments. He he does things like mixing up a low kick to punches immediately. Again, this is not an easy thing to do. And probably the fact that Cruz is so used to being like all one way, another way, just all different sort of body movements and always trying to find his balance on the end, he's able to low kick and immediately blast punches off the end of it. And this, like I said, this is quite difficult to do. Just from the balance of a low kick to immediately follow with a punch, very, very difficult. And he does manage to do it a few times during this fight. The fact that Cruz is so all over the place with his head movement, and it's intentional. I don't mean that in a bad way. It's intentional that he's moving his head this way and that way and is forward and back and leaning all over the place. It makes it incredibly difficult for Vera to get that read. And you can see him mixing in head movement, footwork, feints, southpaw, orthodox, and it sort of leaves Vera just second guessing and he does spend a lot of the fight just almost on the edge of attacking but never quite throwing uh throwing a strike vera does have moments in round two where he does use the jab to set up his biggest shots which honestly i just wish he did it more i think his whole game plan is to be patient not give too much away from a guy so hard to read like cruz but he's just looking for the big shot the whole time. He's patient, knows knows that, you know, if he if he can just pick his timing, he's going to hurt him. But in the process of being patient, he's dropping rounds because Cruz is definitely the more active fighter of the two. The danger of Dominic Cruz's style is throwing his head around so much, almost in an erratic way, is sometimes you can get caught zigging when you should have zagged. So he might throw his head to the left and walk into a punch or throw his head to the right and walk into a kick or something like that. And you see glimpses of it in this round where Cruz removes the wrong way, Vera catch him with, catches him with a punch and really breaks his rhythm or even hurts him. Despite that, I still think that Cruz wins round one and two. In the beginning of round three, we see Cruz again use that low kick to punches uh, combination, again, really hard to do, and he, he catches Vera with it. But once again, the old zig when you should have zagged, Vera catches him with one punch of his own at the end of the combination, which really slows Cruz up. You can see for a brief moment afterwards, he's like his movement isn't as, as on point and he's a little bit more cautious with his approach just from one single shot. So this again, this is, this is the risk of that style of Cruz of throwing his head around so much. In this round, we see once again, Vera uses the jab so nicely to close the distance and he lands a nice right hand, which is the biggest moment in the fight so far in uh, in round three. And I, I just, like, watching Vera's last fight, it wasn't until round three where he started to use that jab. And that, for me, 
when he started to sit behind that jab to find his range and distance to land his biggest shots, that was when the, he really took the fight and ran with it. He This whole fight, he gets little glimpses where he uses the jab, but he doesn't he doesn't stay behind it. He he sort of uses it for a bit and then goes away from it, goes back to looking for his big shot. I just wish, I really wish he would use it more. I feel like he could make life so much easier for himself. When he's not jabbing, he's almost a little bit indecisive. He's watching, think, nah, and then and then Cruz is gone. And Vera's trying to line him up again, looking for a right hand or a big hook or something like that. You can just see him watching and watching and and in, it's never quite there because Dominic Cruz, it's like he has to close too much distance. And by that time, Cruz's erratic movement, he, he's gone again. So just the reason why I really like that jab is it's not a big movement. It's just that. That's all it is while closing the distance with his feet. So I'd really like to see him get in a little bit closer and then start to look for his bigger shots. But yeah, unfortunately, he doesn't, he doesn't do it a lot. But when he does it, he does it really well. So, I, you know... Once again, Vera's jab is great. I think he underutilizes it. Even though Vera had the biggest moment in the fight so far in this round, I think I almost still give it to Dominic Cruz, round three. Um, it could go either way, but I just feel like that you know 10 second burst wasn't enough for him to override the four minutes, 50 seconds where Cruz seemed to be throwing more volume and he didn't, not necessarily damaging Vera, but I really felt like he was the busier of the two. And I, I, I think I still give round three to uh, Dominic Cruz. Round four, Vera once again being patient, but you can see he's definitely starting to find Cruz's rhythm. So Cruz is moving around, Vera every now and then he throws one out shots, which seem to crack him. It seemed to hurt him a little bit. Nothing devastating yet, but you can see Vera is picking his timing. And then, once again, Cruz zigs when he should have zags. He leans out to his right. Vera throws his head kick up, which just completely flattens his face to one side. He drops. Vera jumps on, finishes him with a little bit of ground and pound. He's pretty much out at this point, and he just seals the deal with a few punches. The ref waves the fight. Vera wins then and there. To the point I've been making throughout this whole video, Dominic Cruz, his... What makes him so hard to hit also, in this instance, it just added to the effectiveness of Vera's kick. He's so hard to hit because he throws his head this way and throws his head, he switches his stance and he's just constantly moving his head side to side and dipping and leaning in this really unorthodox style. But because he's committed to dipping away and throwing his head so much with his hands down, Vera's left kick when it comes up, he meets it with force and it's, you know, yeah, it's it's absolutely devastating. His nose, I, I don't know if you see it too well, but I was slowed it down to watch the kick. His nose, as soon as that foot comes off his face, his nose is like that. It's, it's brutal. Now, there seems to be a bit of a recurring theme. Like last week, we had uh, Jamar Hill fight, and I was talking about the fact that there were definite holes in Hill's game that didn't matter because Hill got the knockout. And... I'm not saying that's the case here because I think Marlon Vera was, I think he was the better of the two fighters, to be honest. I just think because he knew he had that knockout power, that was his game plan. Just be patient, just wait, just watch, the knockout will come, which is, you know, in one way it's really admirable because for those of you who haven't fought, haven't fought before, probably don't understand how hard it is to not let your ego get the better of you. You get hit, you go, fuck, and you want to go back in and immediately reply. That you with one, you've got to hit him with three straight away. That's that's your ego getting you. But Vera, he manages to not lose his head in the chaos and just get caught into a firefight where he might get caught with some random shot and just stays patient. And he's happy, all right, I'll drop that round, knockout will come. Round two, I drop that one, the knockout will come. Round three. Maybe he drops it, but he can tell he's just starting to find the rhythm and range a little bit more. You know, just like that is admirable to just be so disciplined in your approach to not go swing at things that aren't there and just stick to the game plan. The potential problem with this strategy is you might run out of time. And it seems that five rounds really favor Vera. Because in his last fight, it was the same thing. He, I, I feel like round three is when he really started to take it and run with it. 
If it was a three rounder, he, I think he lost to Cruz if the fight ends in round three. He probably has a different game plan, to be honest. If, if he's a three round fighter, he's probably not gonna go with this game plan, so I'll give him credit there. But that is the risk. You might run out of time. And I, I honestly think if Vera was using his jab, he controls the fight from the beginning. He takes much less risks uh, looking for big shots. I, I think that's, that's his greatest tool. I really like Marlon Vera. I really hope he makes it all the way through and gets himself a title shot. I think he's ex extremely exciting to watch. And like I said, I admire the fact that he wasn't throwing punches. And I know he was copying some criticism throughout the fight from the, from the commentators, but I just, I think it's such a hard thing to do to be getting hit and not lose your head that that for me was extremely admirable. Let me know what you thought of the fights, guys. Chuck in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.